Well, you'll all have heard of the Bob Jones University, best known here at any rate for its close association with the late Dr Ian Paisley, who received his doctorate from the university while serving a prison sentence for unlawful assembly in 1966. The grandson of the university's founder, Bob Jones III, is on a visit to Belfast and to Sunday Sequence. Good morning, Bob, and welcome to the programme. Good morning and thank you. Now, why, why are you in Belfast? I have a great affinity for some wonderful people here in Belfast that I first got to know when my father got to know Dr. Paisley so well, the whole Paisley family. And uh, the derivatives of all of the ministry of Dr. Paisley throughout this land, throughout Britain, and into America. We have so much in common with the, the faith, uh, the Bible faith, the proclamation of the Savior. And uh, my father and Dr. Paisley were just like, uh, like brothers, really, because of the convictions about the Scriptures that they both held and um, I was uh, grafted in, if you will, as a, as a young man uh, with my own personal affinity and identification with what w was being preached here about Christ. And I have, uh, uh, my wife and I look upon the Paisley family as, uh, as one family. We're, we're, we're one family. And so we're here to visit them and to get a little preview of a uh, a very special event which will be launched uh, later in October, the uh, opening of the personal library of Dr. Paisley, consisting of 55 or 60,000 books and made available for the public use. This is the, the Ban View Library, is yes. that correct? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Band side, a bigger Band part of the Band yes. side, Band side <laughs> Library. Now, you speak about a common uh, ministry, Bob, but a divisive ministry at times, particularly here in Northern Ireland, No. I am uh, totally unqualified to talk about Irish poli Northern Ireland politics. And uh, we don't understand the politics of Northern Ireland, and the people of Northern Ireland certainly don't understand the politics of America. I don't understand the politics of America, nor do I particularly care to, um, except as um, they might infringe upon our personal uh, freedom of speech and religious freedom and those constitutional issues that we hold dear. Other than that, I really don't have much time to even think about politics. But the truth is always divisive. Um, the Lord Jesus, when he proclaimed his own deity, he said, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, that was divisive. And when he preached that, according to John chapter 6, it says that many turned away and walked no more with him. He said, I'm that bread come down from heaven. I'm not one of you. I'm not like you. I'm God in the flesh. And many had followed him until that moment. And the truth of his deity divided, and there were only a few left. So Bible truth uh, always divides. Christ said, I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. You're either with me or you're against me. So that's he, part he of it. He also said, love thy neighbor as thyself. And I think in Northern Ireland, what people felt about Dr. Paisley's ministry was that it was anti-Catholic and very alienating to a whole section of the community and perhaps also encouraging uh, sections of the Protestant community to, to be uh, violent and aggressive towards Catholics. That is not my impression, but my impression doesn't really count because I'm an outsider. And as I said, I'm in no way uh, on the scene, could not uh, possibly. It would be, it would be rude and um, officious for me to try to pass judgment on the politics of Northern Ireland. But I, I do know this, Dr. Paisley dearly loved Catholics. It was his desire to see all men come to the knowledge of the truth. Um, uh, denominations are filled with those who know the Savior and love the Savior and those who do not. W within, within a denomination, there are believers and there are unbelievers. He wanted all men, no matter what denominational affiliation, to realize that a church does not hold anyone's uh, ticket to heaven. People don't enter heaven through the doors of a church, but through Christ who said, I'm the door by me. If any man enter in, he will be saved. 
Dr. Paisley's desire was that all men should know the Savior. And Dr. Paisley, because he loved the truth, uh, found himself, as all Christians must, uh, to be, um, to be um, uh, um, to be a, 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 a someone who who hates error, who hates error. That doesn't mean you hate the person. You hate the error that uh, has held the person captive. And there's a big difference in that. And Dr. Paisley represented many, many Catholics in his constituency. They, they loved him and he loved them. Uh, let's go back to the Bob Jones University, if we may. Why did your grandfather found it? That's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. My grandfather was an evangelist. Uh, there was an era in America in the teens and 20s when evangelism was sweeping America. There were maybe 20 or 30 well-known evangelists. My grandfather was among that group that would go into a town at the invitation of the Bible-believing churches, 20, 30, 40 churches in a town that believed the Scriptures, and they would hold meetings, uh, evangelistic meetings, seven days a week, an afternoon meeting, an evening meeting. Those tabernacles that were built for those occasions seated up to 10,000 and more people, and each afternoon, each evening, they were packed for weeks. As a result of the power of the gospel that was preached, many got converted, churches were started, towns were transformed, dance halls closed, bars closed, and um, the whole tenor of America changed for a brief time. In the process of that, my grandfather came across a lot of young people who were having their faith destroyed and their morals destroyed at college. And he said to my grandmother one day, there needs to be a place where young people can study the essentials of learning, the liberal arts curriculum, uh, and come away with their faith strengthened, their confidence in the Bible greater. And he said, I'm going to start a college. And she said, well, you must be a fool. You must be crazy. You don't know a thing about education. He said, well, no, I don't but I can borrow the educational brain, but I know the philosophy young people need if they're going to love and serve Jesus Christ with their lives. And so it was started for that reason. As, by the way, uh, it probably is not so well understood here, and uh, understandably so, but in America, most of the private colleges that would come to mind to people here who know about American education, the Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Dartmouth, you name them, the list goes on and on, were started for the same purpose Bob Jones University was started, to train young people in the Scriptures. That was why they were started. They were started by preachers. Now, none of them lasted more than 100 years, uh, true to their founding purposes, but they were founded to train young people in the Scriptures. By the grace of God, Bob Jones University is now 88 years old and is still true to its founding purpose. We honor the Word of God as absolute truth. Our position is whatever the Bible says is so. Find out what it says and believe it and live it. Now, but you've run into trouble in the past as an institution, have you not? Uh, there was some criticism, I think, in the up until the 60s and 70s about racial segregation of the university or not accepting enough African-Americans. Well, again, if anyone understands the history of American higher education, um, in the 60s and 70s, well, let's take the 60s, up until the mid-60s, there were still about 50% of American colleges that did not have a single black student. So the, the criticism you speak of uh, should be a criticism of all of American higher education up mm -hmm. until a point when they understood mm -hmm. that this was wrong and should be changed. So you now have African-American oh, oh, students? Oh, yes, yes, we do. And Asians? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Many more. Uh, many, many growing uh, minority groups right now at Bob Jones University. Has the university grown a lot over the years? Not a lot, uh, considering that we're 88 years old. We have about 3,000 students. Started with 85 students, just a little independent college. That's a bit of growth, all right. <laughs> well, it just was very slow, you know. In fact, <laughs> this might be found humorous, but my 
My grandfather told my grandmother when he decided to start the college, he said, uh, we'll never have more than 300 students because we can't keep control of it if it's bigger than that. And uh, discipline, um, growing character in the lives of our students is just as important as growing their knowledge. And um, so he wanted to be sure that we were able to grow the character of these students through through proper discipline. And one day she said to him, look, you said God called you to start this school to train young people and uh, educate them in the scriptures. Why, why have you put this arbitrary lid of 300 students on this school? Why don't you take the lid off and just see what God will do? And that's what he did. Now, you mentioned control and discipline. Mm-hmm. Wasn't there an issue about uh, interracial dating also? I mean, is there, a, is there a ban on that? Was there a ban on that at Bob Jones University? There, there was. There was. That was long ago and is long gone, and uh, properly so. But, you know, you, you have to look at any institution in any nation, not just from the point of the view of what is best understood and practiced today, and say because some institution didn't uh, align itself the way we align ourselves today, so therefore there must be something horrible about them. You have to take them in the context of the time, and uh, Bob Jones University today is, uh, is uh, not, uh, not in, uh, in, in any way uh, what we were 60 years ago. But you have had some issues about sexual abuse because uh, I understand uh, that initially is, is it not the case that when students reported sexual abuse, the perpetrator was not handed over to the authorities because that was to be, in, in the words that I read anyway in the reports, a betrayal of Jesus Christ to do so. Is that No, the case? no, that is totally false. And I'm glad you asked that question because I'm happy to set that record straight. The university voluntarily, three years ago, sought an ombudsman, a totally independent ombudsman, to investigate any any claims that any of our graduates had that they were not properly counseled on matters of sexual abuse. These were issues that occurred in the lives, the tragic instances of these students before they came to us and had real needs. And so there was a time uh, three, four years ago when there was the sense that somehow religion was uh, hiding uh, these dark, awful things and uh, even countenancing them. Uh, And uh, we wanted to be on record. Uh, My son Stephen, who was president at that time, said, we want to be up front. There had been no charges, nothing. We just said, we want to be transparent for the world to see that Christians do not hide sin or make excuses for it. And so this group was hired, and they they did this, and they interviewed. Out of 95,000 former students, there were some 40 cases of people who rose out of 88 years of history and said, we don't think we were counseled properly. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a pretty insignificant number of people. Uh, this The university came out of this looking very, very good. And the, the few people who said, we think that uh, the perpetrators uh, against us should have been turned over to the police and the university hid it, the local police department interviewed every one of those people in that report who said that. They investigated it independently, and they have publicly declared to the media and to all of the world who wants to listen, we found not one instance of Bob Jones University hiding from the police any criminal action whatsoever. So praise God that that is so. Now, what about the future of the university? Is there is there another Bob Jones? I saw, notice your your son is called Stephen. Is mm-hmm. there going to be a is there a Bob Jones the fourth? <laughs> yes, there is. He's an he's a writer. Uh, he's a writer. He's not part of the university. He didn't feel that that was God's calling for him. Stephen, our son, was president for ten years, but a year ago. He had to take a step back from the role because of health issues. He's had severe migraines and vertigo for five years. And they've just now, just in the last month, diagnosed him as having Lyme's disease. 
So it's a tough thing to treat. That, that's the thing carried by the little ticks that live on deer and so on, isn't it? It is. Oh, oh dear. It is. Uh, well, uh, Bob Jones the third. thank you very much for coming on to Sunday Sequence and uh, enjoy the rest of your stay in Belfast. You're very kind to have me. Thank you. <laughs>